everybody. Uh, this is Ozzy from Three Monkeys, uh, also formerly of Blockhead. And uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about this marshmallow Swiss mistress amp that I've got here on up on eBay. So uh, this is going to be a really informal discussion or description of the amp, um, along with some playing dispersed throughout. Um, I'll be switching back and forth and plugging this microphone and plugging it into uh, my ISO cab over here um, to demonstrate the sounds as well as give you a little bit of background with my voice. So it may sound a, you know, like I'm kind of going back and forth, back and forth a little bit, and there's not a whole lot of great flow, but, you know, we're just doing this thing for fun here. Anyway, so what is Marshmallow? Marshmallow is a name that I thought of, I don't know, probably back in the 90s, uh, when before Blockhead, actually, and uh, sitting around thinking of, you know, different names for things, and I always thought Marshmallow was kind of a cool name for amps. So I always wanted to do it, so now I'm kind of doing it. Um, and it's not taking the place of Three Monkeys. It's not taking the place of Blockhead. Um, I'm leaving Blockhead as is. Um, what's out there is out there. I don't want to add to the, uh, to the population there. Uh, and Three Monkeys continues on, and that's where my heart is. But uh, I have a lot of ideas for different circuits and different amplifiers. Um, and I don't really want to get, uh, you know, to make a whole lot of the same thing. So when uh, inspiration strikes, I just want to be able to build something and, uh, you know, get the creative satisfaction of having done that. Um, so this Swiss Mistress amp, what is it? Well, it's a uh, JTM45. Uh, beyond that, it is a hot rod JTM45. Um, it was designed with the British blues in mind. Um, players such as like uh, Greeny, Clapton, um, you know, all that old British blues kind of stuff. Um, that's where, uh, you know, this amp came from. I've had that desire to do something that was a little bit more of, I don't want to say a mature hot rodded Marshall, but you know, that's sort of what this is. It's not really the LA thing. It's not, um, you know, uh, meant for that sort of hard rock. It's really meant for the blues. Uh, it, the, the, the filtering of it, the, the tube compression, um, the amount of gain, the type of gain, it retains that JTM45 sounds that we like. Um, it allows you to go clean to dirty with the rolling around the volume on your guitar, but it will go beyond what a normal JTM45 can do in terms of soloing, in terms of gain characteristics. But it still retains that organic JTM45 sound. Um, so what we have here also is, you know, um, the architecture of the amp is unique. It's something that uh, has been rolling around in my head for, you know, a while, and I've utilized it in other amplifiers. It, it allows, um, basically, for a gain stage that is a little bit further downstream than your typical hot-rodded, let's say, Jose amp or, you know, Soldano or something like that, it's uh, basically just prior to the phase inverter, um, just rather, excuse me, just prior to the uh, cathode follower, and what that allows you to do is allows you to still jump channels and allow for that extra stage of compression to be in line. So you could have both channels jumped, and then you could flip that little switch, the uh, cozy cranky switch on the back, and get yourself, um, you know, that extra sort of going to 12 or 13 sort of sound. Um, it's got a master volume on the front, so it's very friendly for playing clubs, and the master volume is that type of master volume, which I've always used. Um, it's been called a lot of names. I first heard of it, you know, maybe, I don't know, 20 years ago, um, and it's the post-phase inverter model. It sounds, to my ear, closest to a non-master amplifier. Okay, in addition uh, to that, cozy cranky switch on the back, we also have another switch that will allow you to go from a tube rectifier to a solid state rectifier. Um, so you can experiment back and forth and see what you, what you prefer, and also, you know, God forbid you should blow up a tube rectifier while you're out at a gig, uh, you just flip that switch and you're back it up and running. Um, well, I guess I should uh, tell you a little bit about how that amp was set up for that first uh, Rolling Stone sort of thing and what guitar and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so starting off with the guitar, it's a, it's a Schechter PT. Um, I actually built it. Um, it's a, a maple neck basswood body, but it has the Schechter Low Z pickups in it, a uh, standard um, sort of, uh, you know, um, 
a Telecaster Bridge, uh, both those pickups are humbuckers. And on that particular clip, I was up on the neck pickup. Um, I really like the sounds of that guitar. The, uh, those Schechter pickups, um, that, you know, the low Z models, they have a really neutral sound and um, very full. I, I think they did a really good job with those suckers. Anyway, so the way the amp was set up for that particular clip, we were in um, the high treble channel, uh, the cozy cranky switch, we were in cozy mode, which is the lower gain. Um, the master was up around, and we're gonna just count these off in terms of, you know, like your clock dial. Um, this, they were about at nine o'clock on the master, we were about 10 o'clock on the bass, we were about 11 o'clock on the mids. Uh, the treble was up at about three o'clock, and the, the pre-gain, or rather the high treble gain or loudness was right around noon. Um, I should also say that I've got this AB switch on the floor here, which is, uh, allows me to select between the normal and the high treble channel. Um, Recording-wise, I've got this uh, ISO cab with a uh, Celestian uh, Vintage 30 in it. Um, I'm planning on uh, ditching that at one point, but for right now, this will uh, work just fine. Um, so. Why don't we also, uh, we'll keep going here and, and do another uh, couple of sound samples. Why don't we move to um, the middle pickup and we'll get a little bit of a hotter sound and we'll see what we come up with. All right, so just hold on, I'm gonna switch over the mics here. Okay, so now you, you can sort of see, um, we just basically, you know, uh, switched the guitar over the middle position. I didn't touch any of the tone controls or anything else. So uh, I think what we should do now maybe is uh, let's demonstrate how much more um, gain you can get out of here. Uh, I'm going to leave everything the same on the front of the amp as well as on the back. I should say that we're also in the solid state mode. We're not in tube mode. We're in solid state mode. Surprised? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Anyway. What I'm going to do is leave the front of the amp the same. We're going to the same channel, and I'm going to flip that little switch on the back, and we're going to go into crazy mode. I'm going to take my telly here, and I'm going to flip it over to the bridge, um, and let's see what we can come up with here. So hang on a second here, and I'll switch it over for you. Okay, so uh, you can see you could get a little bit of the schmutz out of this amp. Um, why don't we do something where, you know, um, let's go into the normal channel um, and we'll set that thing up basically about the same kind of volume. Um, and uh, let's see what it sounds like and I'll play the same thing. All right, hang on. <laughs> Okay, so you could sort of see there that, you know, the other channel is voiced with a little bit more bottom, uh, which as it should be in a JTM45. So you can really do all your, you know, your standard JTM45 sort of jump settings. You know, one voiced a little bit different than the other and blend the two together and then add in that cranky switch and boost the sum of the two as opposed to just boosting one and then moving the other one in. You know, it allows for a much more balanced sort of sound. And I think we should do something about you know the amp and how it responds to your guitar's volume. So what I'll do now is I'll just basically, I'll be in the same channel, you know that fat channel, and uh, I'll just play around with the volume control a little bit, and you can see how the amp responds, you know, to your volume input. All right, so hang on here, and we'll just switch on out.
Yeah, so the amp will, you know, it'll allow you to, uh, to just leave it if you want in one setting and just roll around with the volume on your guitar and get, you know, from your rhythm to your lead sounds if you're that sort of player, no problem. But, you know, speaking of sort of rhythm sounds and clean sounds, why don't we do something and set the amp up, put it back into the cozy mode, um, you know, turn down the pre's a little bit and just go for some straight sort of, you know, clean tones. Um, uh, let me just uh, re-plug in the ISO cab and we'll dial something in. All right, hang on here. clean sounds. Um, well, I'm kind of running out of ideas about what to do here to demonstrate this thing for you, so I think we should start wrapping it up. It's getting kind of long anyway, and if you've, if you've made it this far, I congratulate you. Anyway, so that is the amp, the Swiss Mistress. So uh, settle up one night next to the fireplace with your new woman. All right.